Manila, Senator Leila de Lima on Sunday denied ever saying that the Duterte administration orchestrated the deadly explosion in Davao City as a prelude to declaring martial law. In a statement, the lawmaker's office added that she never released a statement saying, Davao is not the safest place after all. Obviously, this statement maliciously attributed to her is part of the disinformation campaign designed to discredit her, said the Camp of de Lima, who is a staunch critic of President Rodrigo Duterte's bloody campaign against drugs and criminals. Duterte has accused de Lima of wanting an affair with her former driver, who allegedly received drug money to fund her senatorial campaign. The senator has denied the charges. The Lima's office said she will also issue an official statement today about the Davao attack, which prompted the president to declare a nationwide state of lawless violence. Duterte, a longtime mayor of Davao City, has stressed that his declaration is different from martial law as there will be no curfews and no suspension of the writ of habeas corpus. Police now have custody of eight witnesses and several CCTV clips that could shed light on the deadly Friday night explosion in Davao City. Chief Inspector Andrea Della Cerna, spokesperson of the Davao Police Regional Office, said Sunday that the witnesses linked four persons of interest to the bombing that killed at least 14 people. In a bid to identify the persons of interest, Della Cerna said investigators, continue to gather CCTV footage from establishments around the bombed night market in Roxas Avenue. The Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Unit has a CCTV clip from the blast site itself, but it was not clear, she explained. The Philippine National Police has yet to confirm that obviously if extremists were behind the attack. Della Cherna said they were looking into the possible role of disgruntled vendors in the explosion. Some traders, she said, were dissatisfied with the granting of stalls in the night market. The Davao bombing, which also injured at least 67 people, has prompted President Duterte to declare a state of lawlessness in the country. Embassies of the United States, United Kingdom and Australia have also advised their citizens to either reconsider or avoid travel to the southern Philippines due to the incident. Nako pa, hindi naman po ako ganun. Wala naman po akong pakialam sa mga political considerations. Nako pa, hindi naman po ako ganun. Wala naman po akong pakialam sa mga political considerations. Uh, at hindi nyo man, uh, uh, alam nyo naman po siguro yan, ano, sa CHR pa lang ako, talagang I've been really raising hell against. Nagkandak nga ako noon ng public hearings at doon nga siya una atang nagalit sa akin eh. Nung nagkandak ako ng public hearings doon, doon sa Davao. So, uh, hindi po, it's not at all consideration and definitely, ibig sabihin, hindi niya po ako kilala na hindi ko po ginagawa ang dapat gawin o sa tangin kong dapat gawin dahil sa mga ganyang mga konsiderasyon. Dumipensa naman si Dilima na hindi siya sumasakay sa isyu. Maaari daw sabihin ni Duterte ang gustong sabihin nito. Sukdu lang insultuhin ang DOJ Secretary, ngunit gagawin at gagawin pa rin daw ni Dilima ang nararapat base sa mandato ng kanyang trabaho. I just do what I have to do. Uh, may mga witnesses kasi kami noon sa CHR. Na iba ang sinasabi. Tapos itong witness din na ngayon na nasa WPP, ganun din ang sinasabi. Siya ang tinuturo. With us or against us, may I just uh, remind you of that famous statement? Dito po sa mga katagang ito, nag-uumpisa ang lahat ng pangingitil ng salungat ng mga opinyon. And ultimately, the destruction of democracy itself. Kitang-kita po ito sa ginagawa sa akin ng Pangulo ngayon. 
Ang malaking tanong, pagkatapos ko, sino ang isusunod sa mga nangangahas na sumalungat sa Pangulo? They have thrown everything against me except the kitchen sink. They have done everything except what I have been asking for, a formal charge and complaint so that I can defend myself in a fair hearing. Yung dalawa niyo daw po nag-employed. Wala na daw po sa office ni Secretary Aguirre, pero may dalawa daw po pura na statement yung dati niyo daw po ng security. Ano po yung nasa? Alam mo, ano na naman yan? So, hindi isa-isa nila yung mga former security ko, former person. Grabe naman yan, acts of harassment. Ano uli ang mga makukuha nila dyan? Assuming may mga makukuha sila, it should only be again mga kasinungalingan. Kung, kung yan ang pipilitin nila na may kinalaman ako sa droga, kasinungalingan talaga yan. I will, I, I've been saying that. Uh, alam ko po ang totoo. Ang totoo, wala po akong kinalaman sa droga. Kung may kinalaman na ako sa droga, ilinalaban, ilinalabanan ko nga ito. Di ba? Uh, ako nga yung nagparade noon. Ako nga yung mga nagpapafile din ng mga kaso and now I'm being accused of being involved in, in whatever capacity that is it's, it's simply it's so painful for me and I continuously get these accusations and then yan iniisa-isa nila mga ano yan former security former staff wala ho silang makukuha sa kanila kung meron ho silang makukuha sa kanila na pag-aamin o pagsasabi o na involve ako kasi nungalingan mo yan kung merong magaganyan I'm sure may dahilan kung bakit magsasabi sila ng kasi nungalingan either under extreme pressure o nakoors o anuman kaya nga hindi ako naniwala doon sa lumabas sa isang dyaryo na kita ko kanina na meron na nga daw dalawang affidavits doon sa dalawang former employees ko na ganun ang sinasabi na nag-create ng accounts na may mga ganong deposits na ako ang nagpa-create o ano man o whatever hazy rin kasi yung mga information so bakit naman lang tara na i-report ng ganun na wala man lang attempt to, to validate or try to validate na, simple lang naman yan tanungin nilang NBI meron ba ganong affidavit na kung merong affidavit ganun ba yung laman I don't think so. Hindi ako naniniwala na gano'n ang laman. Kung totoo yan na meron na silang affidavits. Hindi po kapanipaniwala yan na aaminin, mag-aamin sila ng gano'n tapos para lang ituro ako. In the name of this war on drugs, we are slowly but surely inching our way to the actual realities of a police state where the government can look into your private affairs and visit quote unquote, you in your homes even without any probable cause, without any search warrant, without any report or complaint against you or anyone of your household. I can only characterize such a situation as martial law without the formal declaration. Kaya rin po siguro pinipilit sa atin ang paglibing ni Marcos sa libingan ng mga bayani para makalimutan natin ang kasaysayan ng diktadura at martial law at para muling maging katanggap-tanggap sa atin ang mga pamamaraan ng ganitong klase ng pamamahala na atin nang isinuka at winaksi sa EDSA noong Pebrero of 1986. Sa paglibing kay Marcos sa libingan ng mga bayani ay nais nitong gobyerno na ilibing din ang mga alaala ng ating pakikipaglaban sa pag-abuso sa kapangyarihan ng isang diktador. Ang paglibing ng mga alaalang ito ay pagbaon ay ang pagbaon sa ating kakayanan na, lum, na labanan muli ang isa pang nagbabantang diktadura.